Hi, I'm Scotty Craikett, and I'm here today to discuss electroconvulsive therapy, also known as electroshock therapy. What exactly is electroshock therapy, and uh, what is it used for? Well, let's go back in time and check it out. In 1936, the Italian Ugo Cerletti found that the otherwise lethal effect of electricity could be turned to therapeutic advantage if the current was passed across the head so that the heart was not affected. Lothar Kalinowski who later brought the treatment to the USA, where it quickly triumphed over metrazole. 1950s, late 1950s, the so-called muscle relaxants were developed by pharmacologists, and it got so that you could induce a complete convulsion, an electroencephalographic convulsion. You could see it on the brain waves without causing any convulsion in the body except a little bit of twitching of the toes. So now that we've seen a little bit of where electroshock came from, let's check out what it's used for. Uh, the type of stimulation that they do today is very different than they used to do. Shocked without their consent. They were shocked for ulcers, for psoriasis, even for homosexuality. And still today, people are forcibly shocked for depression by court order. But it was pretty clear in the 30s and by the middle of the 40s that electroconvulsive therapy was very, very effective in the treatment of depression and of course in those days there were no antidepressant drugs and it became very very popular. Electroconvulsive electroshock therapy disappeared but has had a renaissance in the last 10 years and the reason that it has had a renaissance is that probably about 10 percent of people do severe depressives do not respond regardless of what is done for them. No doctor can tell me how it works in terms of the brain function. Nobody has been able to determine that. They do know in huge percentages of cases of severe depression that this is the only thing that works. They really tried basically everything that they had at the time. But medication just did not work for me at all. Memory loss is absolutely the most feared and the most common side effect of electric shock treatment. I couldn't remember phone numbers. I couldn't remember my boyfriend's name. There are some long-term memory losses, and it is a trade-off. Well, it looks like electroshock may have some advantages and disadvantages. Let's see what Dr. John Breeding has to say about this. John? Electroshock is large numbers of voltage of electricity sent directly into the brain, crashing through the blood-brain barrier, sending toxic into the brain, creating cell death by that, creating cell death by the mechanical and heat damage of large voltages of electricity in the brain. Cell death, cell death, cell death. It disables the brain and central nervous system in a way that is considered therapeutic when someone is more subdued and disabled and therefore uh, uh, less aware of their problems or temporarily jolted out of them. Electroshock needs to stop. It needs to stop. It's a crime against humanity. That's the bottom line on electroshock. Always causes brain damage, always causes memory loss, just a matter of how much in each of those. It's never necessary, it sometimes causes death. That's the reality of electroshock. Well, thank you, Dr. Breeding, for sharing your opinion with us today. I would now like to revisit with Dr. Sherwin Newland and see what he has to say. Doctor? couldn't get out of bed before about 11 o'clock. I couldn't even pull the covers off myself. I could hardly see five feet in front of myself. I shuffled when I walked. I was bowed over. I, I rarely bathed. I sometimes didn't shave. It was dreadful. And they tried everything they had. They tried the usual psychotherapy. They tried every medication available in those days. Nothing happened except that I got jaundiced from one of these things. That I am a man who almost 30 years ago, had his life saved by two long courses of electroshock therapy. Lo and behold, by 16, by 17, there were demonstrable differences in the way I felt. By 18 and 19, I was sleeping through the night, and by 20, I had the sense, I really had the sense that I could overcome this, that I could, I was now strong enough that by an act of will, I could blow the obsessional thinking away. Thank you, Dr. Newland, and thank you guys for watching this week. I hope you learned something new about electric shock therapy. Don't forget to turn in next week to our show about milder electric brain stimulations. 
such as vagus nerve stimulation and deep brain stimulation. Catch you next time! Stay tuned in for a brief synopsis of Dale Shankin's daily video blog through 14 electroshock therapies. I would rather have an ECT than get my teeth cleaned. <laughs>